Hey guys, Ryan here. Thank you for joining me for a new video on a Saturday. I want to keep this one pretty brief. In it, I just want to share with you 10 of my favorite fonts to use from Canva for print on demand designs. Now I've said before, you can make print on demand sales using just good font selections. I swear it's true. I've actually dropped an interview in the past with somebody who sold over $300,000 on Amazon merch using text designs that he created from his phone. So trust me, it can be done. And in this video, I wanna give you some font suggestions for you to use, whether it's standalone font designs or pairing the fonts with graphics. So I'm gonna go jump on my computer and we can get started. Thanks again for joining me guys. If you haven't started a Canva account, I've got a link in the description that'll let you sign up for free. One thing to note, if you wanna download transparent PNG files, which is typically the uh, format you need for print on demand, they do charge for Canva Pro. However, Canva is like very popular and does a lot of things. So I'm not telling you you need to go pay for Canva Pro. These fonts that I'm gonna be sharing, uh, you may find them useful regardless of if you use Canva or not, but I just wanted to say that up front. Real quick, before we start, let me introduce myself for the new viewers. I'm Ryan Hogue. I've sold over $1.7 million on Amazon to date. If you wanna follow the links in the description, I've got a free eight-day print-on-demand mini course, one lesson delivered to your inbox daily. I've also got a print-on-demand Facebook community. I would love to have you there. There's a link in the description. And if you didn't know, I publish income reports on the first day of each month. You can follow my progress as a print-on-demand seller. I also share my FBA income merch income, KDP, uh, even YouTube. And last but not least, I have a full print on demand course, over 70 lectures. It's a full knowledge transfer of everything I've learned in over three and a half years doing it. If you'd like to check that out, there's a link in the description as well. All right, guys, thank you for uh, bearing with me through that. Let's talk Canva. So if you haven't signed up before, again, you can use the link. This is what the sign up page looks like. It's free to join. Once you're inside, go ahead and click the create a design button. It'll be in the top right corner. I always recommend doing uh, this approach. So I'm just sharing with you like my full approach. Even though this isn't related to fonts, I figured why not start from the top. So click custom dimensions and then enter 4,500 by 5,400. I always use these as my custom dimensions for most designs. Like this is gonna be vertically oriented and these design styles work best for things like t-shirts, coffee mugs, and um, you know similar products to t-shirts like sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, tank tops, etc. All right, so once you have uh, created your canvas, I always set the background color to a dark color because I like to design for selling my designs against darker colored shirts. It's just a personal preference. I do believe Amazon Merch has validated that those sell best. I could be wrong, but I swear I read that once in the resources section. All right, so the first thing I do is I go to the text uh, option on the left-hand side navigation. Then I click add a heading and I drag it and I drop it into the canvas. That's how I get the uh, basic text there. So I went ahead and I typed make print on demand great again. This is showing us a lot of character variations and it's a lot of words so we can really see these fonts in all their glory. The first font I wanted to share is actually the default. It's open sans extra bold. Now, this is not necessarily an order of preference. It's, I wouldn't call this my favorite font on Canva, but I do love open sans. Like prior to me quitting my job as a web developer, I was working you know nine to five for eight years doing web development. And this is probably my go-to font for any new project. I just love this font for websites. Granted, it doesn't always have to be extra bold, but if I'm doing print on demand, I love a big bold font family. So open sans in the boldest form, which I believe is extra bold. There might be an open sans black actually that might be a little bit bolder, but either way, I do like this font family quite a bit. Font number two, League Gothic. I use this font all the time in Canva. I like it because it's bold, it's tall, and it doesn't occupy a lot of horizontal space, which I like because you can squeeze a lot of words onto one line without it, to me, looking looking bad or looking distorted. So the League Gothic is one of my go-tos. I would write that one down. All right, and then just one thing. So by default, the League Gothic line height, meaning the vertical spacing, I was not a big fan of. So I just wanted to show you guys, if you click that icon in Canva next to effects, it's to the left of effects, you can adjust the line height. You can also actually adjust the letter spacing as well. You can adjust the horizontal spacing between letters, but you can also adjust the line height and you can change it to where it's there's not as much vertical spacing. So as you can see, I did a before and after there just to show you uh, what it looks like if you decide to alter the line height in your designs. Font number three, impact. No, I'm just kidding. So those of you guys that have been watching my channel for a while, you know I love impact font. Impact is such a low hanging fruit, such a basic font, and I'm a big fan. I've sold hundreds, if not over a thousand t-shirts using impact font and just writing words. I mean, it's so simple, uh, but they unfortunately don't have impact in Canva but they do have 
Anton, which looks strikingly similar. So you don't really need impact if you've got a font that looks almost the exact same. So Anton is my font number three. Font number four, you guys have probably seen this uh, this font before. I know I have. And it's called Edmund Texture. Now, it's not a heavily distressed font family. However, it does do some distressing and allow the background color to show through. Distressed is where you have that like grungy sort of like scraped texture on the characters. And I do have a Photoshop tutorial on how to do that. It's on my YouTube channel if you guys want to check that out. But if you uh, don't want to do the extra work, you can just go ahead, use Edmund Texture font family, and it will automatically distress the font for you. Font number five, another very popular distressed characters font family. This is called Gaglin, and I really like this one. This one's been growing on me. Uh, it's just big, bold, kind of rounded edges fonts, and again, distressed, so it lets, it lets a little bit of the background color show through, and it's got that like textured... Um, textured look to it that I swear people love by the way if you want to find big bold font families and go exploring for yourself in Canva you can just click into the uh, when you go to fonts a little sidebar pops up over the normal sidebar and you can actually just type in headings and it will list fonts that are tagged as headings and filter out the thin ones so that's not a bad idea if you're looking for print on demand fonts if you're in agreement with me that the big, bold font families tend to sell best, which would qualify as headings. Font number six, Carter One. I use this a lot. I use it actually in some of my YouTube thumbnails as well. It's a big, bold font. It's a little bit unique. It's got those kind of like, I don't know if this would technically be a serif font. It may be actually. Uh, typically with serif font families, think like Times New Roman. You know how there's those little icicles that hang off of the sides? Uh, those are called serifs. This is almost like a take on a, a big, really bold f font family that has serifs. I don't know if it would technically uh, count or not, but I just like this font. All right, and I'm throwing in a font that I do not like. I decided to, <laughs> sorry, Cabin Sketch, but you're my first victim. Uh, as I was scrolling through the many fonts in Canva, I decided that this Cabin Sketch so unfortunately, like I think I do see when I'm going through my Facebook group, I have a Facebook group for print on demand and people show some of their designs. Like I'm not, I don't want to be the guy who just says my way is the only way. And I don't like that. So I don't usually do that, but uh, it is my personal opinion that like the big, bold fonts tend to show better in search results. And again, if you want to get sales guys, it's search, find, buy, you need to get clicked in search results amidst a sea of competitors selling the same thing as you assuming you're in a niche that has some competition so if you have like a thin weird looking font i'm not liking your chances of getting clicked in search results opposed to if you have like a really big bold font that shows better so i had to uh hate on cabin sketch a little bit here font number seven bangers all right this is one this is one i hadn't used in a while actually but it came as a suggestion and i like it because it's got like a little bit of a comic book theme to it this one came as a suggestion from my buddy Dominic. Go check out his uh, YouTube channel, Baddie's Passive Income, where he talks a lot about print on demand as well. And if you guys missed it, I had him on for an interview last week. I'll put a link to it uh, here in the corner here to my YouTube interview with him where he shared a story where he made, I think, like $2,500 profit. He did some absurd numbers in a two-day span on Amazon Merch. But what's really crazy about his story, or at least the interview, is he pretty much spills the beans. He pretty much shares everything. He didn't hold anything back. So show him some love to his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description and also check out our interview if you missed it. All right, font number eight. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm assuming that that is a silent K and that it's pronounced knee wave. If it's not pronounced that, correct me in the comments below. But I really like this font. I have used it in my YouTube thumbnails quite a bit and I've used it on some print on demand products as well. I just like the uh, fluffy, like marshmallowy. Uh, layout of this font and I had to hate on an ugly font family quick side story associated with Baloo is uh, I used to actually use this if you go to my website ryanhoag.com it's kind of like my blog for my passive income blog I put all my income reports there I put some content out there about you know print on demand merch FBA I used to use this Baloo font in my uh like every new post I would make has a graphic associated with it. And I don't know what I was thinking, but 
I decided to make Baloo font like the default. So <laughs> yeah, there's some old ugly pictures on my website with Baloo font on top of it. And I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking back then. At some point, somebody knocked some sense into me and I no longer use this font, but I, I'm not a fan. I can't do it anymore. In 2020, I can't do Baloo anymore. All right, font number nine, luckiest guy. Again, I don't know what it is about this font. It's big, it's bold. Uh, it's not too tall. I tend to like the tall fonts. So what's cool about Photoshop, I don't think you can do this in Canva. In Photoshop, I could hit control T on my keyboard. Uh, and I think that's like the skew or no, 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 it's transform. And then you can do something like hold shift and pull it upwards. And I can take a font like this and scale it to be taller. So that's something that I don't think Canva supports. If it does, I haven't been able to find out how to do it. Uh, but yeah, like this is a font that I might use more in Photoshop, make it a little bit taller just to occupy more space. But uh, I do like the like fun, playful, weird angles that the letters are cut at. You can see that they, I don't know, I like the letter A, how it has like two different angles in the bottoms of the of the both of the sides of the letter A. Uh, it just makes it look fun, playful. This would be appropriate for maybe youth size or youth targeted designs and niches. And last but not least, font number 10, Mogra. So I've been using this font a lot on my YouTube thumbnails as well. I've definitely sprinkled it into some print-on-demand designs. It reminds me of that uh, Knee Wave font, uh, if we go back a couple slides. It's got that kind of like thick, marshmallowy look, but it's not as thick, you know, but it's got those rounded edges. And it's, it's light, it's playful, it's fun, it's also bold, it's easy to read. Um, actually, if you look at the top of these slides, this is the font I've been using in my slides as well. So one thing about this font that I do not like, and it's not illustrated here in this picture, is that it doesn't, in my mind at least, it doesn't contrast well with uppercase and lowercase letters next to each other. I do not like the lowercase letters at all in this font family. So that's one thing that I would make a note of. Other than that though, big fan of Mogra. All right guys, I know that this was not a definitive list and it was completely subjective. It was all opinion based. I'm sure that I didn't mention all the best fonts in Canva. So if you guys would like to share your favorite fonts with me, I would be happy to check them out. Leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. And anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching till the end. I appreciate your time. If you like this video, if you made it this far in, please hit that like button. Let the YouTube algorithm know. And if you're not subscribed and you want to hit that big red button, I would really appreciate it. But thank you guys. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you soon. Passive Income School is open. Enroll now at ryansmethod.com. Thank you.